and welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. So we had our uh, most recent London UK Fountain Pen Club meetup, and this was the meetup for December 2018, or our Christmas 2018 meetup. And uh, we held it at our usual place in Beershenki in London, and that was near Liverpool Street Station. Uh, as typically from uh, UK weather, it was a very wet and windy day, uh, being a uh, December day. Uh, very uh, typically autumnal, almost winter-like uh, in London. There were about 16 of us in attendance. Uh, a couple have recently moved away. Um, Ali has uh, moved back to the US. Terry has uh, very recently moved to Wales. And uh, Mishka moved away to Canada in summer, uh, all of which we, we miss very greatly. Um, so to celebrate new beginnings, it was a time for celebration. And yes, I was back to my two steins of beer. So something I've been organising lately um, uh, in the last probably three or four months is a, a group buy for both the London Fountain Pen Club and the UK South Fountain Pen Club. And I've been doing a number of group buys. Uh, one group buy was for Akamon Inc. Uh, and we bought quite a bit of ink there. I also bought some Penidas from Chatterley. Uh, and also uh, some Penida pen fillers uh, we bought recently, uh, which are not currently available in the UK just yet. So uh, I did a group buy with uh, Stefano at Cedograph Corsani. So I had a a load of pen fillers uh, to give out to people who had ordered them through the group buy. Uh, the remainder will be going to uh, the, the rest of the members at the UK South Fountain Pen Club uh, in a couple of weeks time when we meet up there. Uh, and I suspect I'll be doing more group buys uh, as time goes on. Um, uh, currently these are limited really only to the uh, London Pen Club and the UK South Pen Club. But if you come along and you want to get in on these group buys, do let me know. So some of the pens that I took to the uh, London Pen Club uh, were these, uh, and you can see here, left to right I have the, uh, these are all Viscontis, so I have the Visconti Watermark, the Visconti Camelot, the Visconti Medici Il Magnifico, uh, the Visconti Istos Arachnus, which I haven't uh, been showing lately, the Visconti Belgica, uh, I have my Visconti Ecstasy Dowd back in service, uh, the Visconti Corsani 90, the Visconti Corsani Octagonal, the Visconti Wall Street Limited Edition, uh, the Visconti Divina Metropolitan, the Visconti Homo Sapiens Evolution, and uh, my last remaining Visconti Medici. I also brought along these pens with me, which were some of my Atelier Lusso pens. Uh, and these are the Atelier Lusso Carina Black Ice, the Carina Diamond Nebula, the Andromeda King Cobra, the Andromeda Dragon, the Andromeda Tectonic Seas, and the Andromeda Vulcan's Forge. And here's a photo of my uh, very large Danny Trio that I picked up at the London Pen Show. This is the Danny Trio Bamboo in the Tamanuri Kidami finish. I also brought with me some of my ASE Bologna extras on request of John, as I think he's very close to wanting to purchase one, or maybe two or three. Although he claims he was not, but let's watch this space, everyone, because I think he might be after one very soon. Um, left to right are the Armando Simone Club Bologna Extra Wild Side, the Arco Verde in a gold trim, the Arco Verde in a rhodium trim, and the Arco Brown in a rose gold trim. I also bought with me one of my newest acquisitions, the Montegrappa Extra 1930 Shiny Lines Dove, which is a Goulet Pens exclusive. And this is a, a really lovely pen, um, and uh, it has uh, been welcomed by everybody that's uh, seen and tried the pen. It's, it's an absolutely stunning pen, and it writes really well. Uh, I'm very glad that I didn't delay, and I did pick this up when I did. Uh, I know a number of you have already gone and picked up your version from Goulet as well uh, on the basis of my review, and you haven't been disappointed as well. So uh, I, I think it is a really good pen, and if you haven't already got to try one or see one in the flesh, try to, because it really is a lovely pen. 
I also brought with me my latest acquisition, which was a pilot vanishing point in the Crimson Sunrise, which is a limited edition version, uh, or special edition version, and uh, it's the 2017 model. And I bought this with a broad nib. Uh, I've been looking for a pilot vanishing point for some time now um, in a broad nib, and uh, I have one in a fine nib, and I find it a little bit too much on the extra fine side. Uh, so I've been looking for a broad nib. This one came up for a really good price, so I decided uh, in the end that I would actually buy this one. So I added this uh, very recently to my collection uh, in uh, the end of November. And here you can see the Montegrappa Extra 1930 Shiny Lines Dove alongside the Armando Simone Club Bologna Extras. And you can really see the size difference here. Um, the Montegrappa is, isn't a small pen, but it is uh, in comparison to the Armando Simone Club pens. It's, they are already quite a large pen, but you can really see the size difference. I also had with me my three Leonardo pens again, uh, and these were available for people to try out. Uh, left to right was the uh, Leonardo Momento Zero Horn, the Leonardo Mediterraneo, which is the celluloid version with a piston filling uh, mechanism and a gold nib, and then the Momento Zero Positano Blue. And Gary also brought along his Lamy Studio for me to try. This is a pen that's quite interesting because of the clip. And as you can see with the clip here, it goes from being horizontal at the top of the cap to being vertical in alignment at the bottom of the cap, um, which is actually, strangely enough, something that appeals to me. And I, I really don't know why, but um, I think it's because it's, it's not like a normal clip, and maybe that's why. But um, th this um, uh, Lamy Studio uh, was in the brush steel finish, and uh, uh, I must say, it does actually look an, a lovely pen. Uh, there was also my Visconti Homo Sapiens J to try out at the pen club. I was able to swap the nibs around. Uh, Thomas uh, at the club wanted to try one of my 14 karat gold nibs. Uh, the Visconti Homo Sapiens Jade had a 23 karat uh, palladium medium nib in. So I decided to swap it out and allow him to try the 14 karat gold nib. Rupert also brought along a new acquisition, and this was the Platinum Procyon. Uh, and this is in a uh, very striking yellow finish. It's called the Citroen Yellow. Um, and I actually really like the colour on this. Um, I don't normally like yellow pens, um, but this was a very, like, pastel lemony type colour. And it just, it, it was not only pastel, but it was more like a matte finish to it. And it just looks right for some reason. Uh, and and I, I think it looks much better than a lot of the other yellow pens that maybe you would see from Sailor or, or other pen manufacturers. Thomas also brought a number of his Omos pens with him. You can see them from this uh, leather pen wrap uh, that he has here. Um, he also, uh, amongst this, brought his uh, Omos Arte Italiana Paragon, which is a lovely pen. The Paragon has a medium nib, and here you can see the laser etching on the nib, and also the ebonite cut feed, which was something that Omos were very much renowned for. Gary has been liking his pocket pens uh, recently, and he brought along a Pilot Elite for, for us to try. It's basically, I believe, a Pilot E95S, uh, or very similar, and comes with a 14 karat medium nib. Uh, you can see it unposted in my hand here. The pen is quite small, although it was comfortable to write with uh, at this length. It actually did surprise me quite greatly, because I didn't think it was going to be that comfortable. Posting the pen, however, makes it a much more usable fountain pen, and this really was what the pen was designed for. Thomas also brought along his Pelican M620 New York, and although I am a lover of Pelicans, and I have a lot of uh, M800s, I have an M1000, and I have an M600, I wasn't much of a, a lover of the new uh, Stone Garden that, that Pelican have come out with, and um, Thomas uh, brought this M620 New York with him, and I wasn't really much of a lover of this either. 
the um, material is it's very much like a black and white cracked ice effect that's going on. And no matter how I try to look at the pen, it always reminds me of a cow. And I really don't know what Pelican was thinking of here. Thomas also brought along his Omas Dharma fountain pen. And there are two things that Thomas really does like. One is that he likes super, super, super extra fine nibs. And the second are small pens. And uh, this uh, Omas Dharma really is a small pen. Um, it's a lovely Arco celluloid. I love the Arco brown celluloid. But for me, the pen is just way too small. Um, I, I'm sure that for some people with smaller hands, it's a really nice size pen. But for me, I, I need a pen that is a little bit larger, unfortunately. Here you can see the Omas Dharma in comparison to the larger Arte Italiana Paragon. Now, the Arte Italiana Paragon is actually the size of the Omas Milord. Um, but um, you can see really just how small the Omas Dharma really is. And here's a comparison picture of how large my Danny Trio Bamboo is uh, that I picked up at the London Pen Show. This is in comparison with a Pilot Vanishing Point Crimson Sunrise. And, and again, like you can see just how super oversized this pen really is. Cameron also brought his new acquisition, a Pelican M815 metal stripe. And I'm really surprised at how heavy the body is of the pen compared to how very super light the cap is. The M815 is more the weight of an M1000, with the extra weight being in the body of the pen. Uh, it comes with a rhodium-plated 18 karat gold nib, uh, and if there was another M800 series pen that might really interest me, it would be the metal stripe. Interesting that I hadn't noticed on the online photos before that the M815 comes with an ink window. It's really hard to see, but you can see it against brighter backgrounds, like the background here of a white page from my notebook. Here's one of my Atelier Lusos. It's the Carina Diamond Nebula, and I just had to take some photos of this. The pen has real diamond dust in the body of the resin, and you can see under these very harsh lights just how much the body sparkles. It's truly an amazing pen. And I really do love that material. And I'm actually even more surprised that um, when Eric made this pen at Atelier Lusso, uh, he took it to the San Francisco Pen Show, and nobody purchased the pen, and he came back with the pen. And I saw that Eric still had the pen on it listed on his website, and was utterly surprised it never sold, and thought that maybe Eric hadn't updated his website, uh, and it had already been sold. But when I messaged Eric, he said, nope, the pen definitely didn't sell and uh, much to his surprise and much to my surprise so I guess the luck was on my side because I had been looking at the pen prior to the San Francisco pen show and I nearly bought it but I decided not to because I already had six new pens on order for Merrick um, but when I saw that the pen didn't sell and he brought the pen back I decided obviously luck was on my side along with fate and everything else, and the pen was obviously destined for my collection, so I decided to buy the pen, and I'm really glad that I did buy it, because it's a stunning, stunning looking pen. And here's three of my Visconti overlays that I really do love. The Visconti Istos Arachnis, the Visconti Belgica, and the Visconti Ecstasy Dowd. These are three of some of my favourite pens in my collection, and they are really lovely pens, not only to look at, but also to write with. Another three of my favourite pens are my stacked celluloids. Here you can see the Visconti Corsani 90, sadly long sold out. The Visconti Corsani Octagonal, also now not available. And the Wall Street Limited Edition, which can still be found in various colours, but you do have to hunt for it. And here's another photo of one of my other 
uh, stack celluloids. This is the Visconti Divina Metropolitan, and this is the cap. And you can see here that the silver twisting rods, which is actually a um, key feature on the Visconti Divinas, uh, is, is wrapping around this stack celluloid. Uh, and it is a stunning, stunning pen. Sadly, the Visconti Divina Metropolitans, though, were only made in the midi size and not the oversize. And this confuses a lot of people. It confused me to start with. Um, and uh, I would much rather love to see the Visconti Divina in the stack celluloid in an oversized pen. But sadly, Visconti never made them. I also took with me my Visconti Homo Sapiens Evolution. And here you can see the intricate detail on the cap of the etching in the swirls, which is really an amazing pattern. Uh, I think Visconti really did excel themselves on the engraving uh, on on the cap. And this engraving is also on the section of the, the fountain pen and also on the filling knob as well. Uh, and you can see that I have a, a full review of this pen on my channel. I also had to bring my remaining Visconti Medici with me. Uh, this is a pen that I do love. I don't write with it as much nowadays, um, but I do love the material. I had originally purchased two of these, but have recently sold one to a friend, as I really don't need the two pens anymore, uh, and I rarely have both of them inked up at the same time. As many of you will know, I tend to ink up pens uh, with the same ink colour versus the same pen colour. So having two brown pens with two brown inks just doesn't seem right to me. Um, I, I guess I could put another colour in there, um, but uh, I decided because I'm not using my second uh, Visconti Medici that I would sell it. But here you can see the lovely chatoyance going on in the aqua silk material that Visconti use. So that's it really. That was the um, uh, London UK Fountain Pen Club. Uh, we had a, another new member that turned up, which was Philip, um, and it was great to see Philip. He's into Visconti's as well, just like me, and uh, uh, he had some uh, some of the old style Visconti Van Goghs with him, uh, and uh, it was it was great to see the uh, other members of the club as well, and to wish everybody well for uh, the Christmas season. So thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye-bye.